Hello friends, this is Eli from Mystic Circuits. Some of you have used an oscilloscope in order to look at the signals passing through your modular synth. This can be useful for understanding what each module does, or for diagnosing issues with your modules, but also sometimes you've been captivated by how beautiful the shapes of the waveforms is on your screen. Imagine if there was a kind of artwork that focused entirely on making beautiful shapes on the oscilloscope by sending signals to control the X and Y position of the beam on your scope. This art is called oscillographics, and while it is quite niche, there are some dedicated artists making very compelling work using this technique. Oscillographics uses an oscilloscope, a modified Vectrex arcade console, or in some cases a laser, to make geometric patterns and images based on two incoming signals, which control the X and Y position of a glowing beam. If you've ever used an oscilloscope, you probably have just seen the waves on the screen either scroll by or sit still based on the amplitude of the wave over time. However, most oscilloscopes have a special mode that let you insert a second signal, which takes over the time dimension and lets you inject the X and Y coordinates of the beam directly. One of the coolest aspects of oscillographics comes from the fact that the two channels required to make the X and Y signal can also be used as the left and right channels of a stereo signal. That means that you can both see an image and the sound used to create that image change in tandem, sometimes making entire songs that you can see when plugged into an oscilloscope. For those of you that have been following in the previous patch examples, you might know that 3 VCA has quite a few tricks up its sleeve for messing with stereo signals. And as you might expect, it also has a lot of tricks for messing with X and Y signals in a similar manner. Let's dig into a couple of patches where I can show you how to make these sorts of images using 3 VCA. Now this patch is designed to show the basic functions that 3 VCA can do in an oscillographic context. The functions themselves are pretty simple, but when used in tandem with other modules, 3D VCA can be quite a Swiss army knife for manipulating this type of visuals. To cover the basic setup, we have our main outputs coming from the bottom of the 3D VCA module, with X coming from our southwest input and Y coming from our southeast input, but you can just as easily swap these around. We have both of these molted and then going to our output module so that we can also hear what's going on, and then off screen, the molt then connects these signals to our oscilloscope probes. Now, if we turn the volume up, you can see this dot in the middle of my screen uh, turns into something visible. We're taking a feed of our oscilloscope and superimposing it on top of the image of our, um, of our synthesizer so that you can see both pieces of what's going on here. And you can also hear that as I change things happening on the oscilloscope, we're also able to hear the difference, right? Now, if I unplug one of these cables, you can see it flatten because we're removing either the X or Y coordinates, and that's just to demonstrate that we need to use both outputs in order to get something uh, visually interesting from uh, our synthesizer. So here I'm trying to do the most simple thing that we can do with oscillographics, which is to make a circle. And for those of us that remember high school trigonometry, you can make a circle in an XY graphing system using a sine and cosine. Now, here we're using the fantastic Schlappy 3 body. Um, I use this all the time for oscillographics, and it's quite convenient in the fact that you're able to use two of its output as outputs as a sine and cosine uh, related um, oscillator. So we have these two outputs coming from the main oscillator going into the southwest and southeast inputs on our 3D VCA. Now the most basic option we have for altering the uh, shape of the circle is to change the size, which is the same as changing the volume of the audio coming out. And we do this by tweaking the Z parameter. You can see I'm changing the slider. You know, this is really, really useful in oscillographics, especially when you're doing it under voltage control. So you can see here, I'm using an LFO from the uh, Microtides on screen and one of the things about oscillographics is that we're everything that we're modulating is able to happen up to audio rate so you can get some really interesting patterns by doing all of this 
really quickly. So next I'm going to show you how to alter the aspect ratio of the circle by tweaking the X knob. We are able to flatten the circle into either a vertical or a horizontal line. And this happens similarly with panning. Um, you are gradually increasing the level of one side or the other, either the left or right channel. And in this case, that's controlling the uh, uh, relative side of uh, the X or Y channel, right? So here we're getting only X, here we're getting only Y. This can be particularly useful when adding multiple shapes together because you can set one of the shapes to control the X more than the Y and vice versa. And also, obviously, this can be voltage controlled. Um, and this brings me to the Y control, which is probably the most useful thing that 3D VCA does for this sort of context. Here you can see Y is all the way down, which means that we are outputting only the uh, southernmost inputs being our circle, but we also have these two inputs coming from our Platz oscillator, which is giving us um, some other interesting shapes coming from the harmonics mode, which is one that I use quite a bit for oscillographics. So you can see here, we're adding a couple things together, and this is just the uh, harmonics mode coming from Platz, right? So as we gradually turn Y down, we are bringing back in our circle shape until we get just the circle, right? And you can see that with just a little bit of these things added together, you get something that's sort of halfway between a circle and halfway between this shape, which is slightly more complex. And that's how uh, shapes add together in oscillographics. You don't just take a circle and then you add in a square and you get a circle on top of a square. You actually get a circle that's sort of like um, transposed by a square or in this case by a shape like this. So another bit about adding different shapes together is that the frequency of the different shapes matters quite a lot. Um, in this case, you can see we have our circle altering the frequency of the circle doesn't really change the circle unless we go really low it starts to flicker right so now if i add back in our harmonic oscillator and i keep it so that we're able to hear both you can see as i change the frequency of the circle oscillator we're actually getting things all these different sort of interference patterns that have to do with the ways in which the uh, waves are adding together Speaking of adding things together, another one of the fantastic things that 3D VCA can do with oscillographics is using the sum inputs to add multiple shapes together, right? So here we have our first 3D VCA, which has our circle shape, and then we have a whole second 3D VCA over here, which has a separate set of shapes going in, and the two outputs, the southwest and southeast outputs, are going into the southwest and southeast sum inputs on our second 3D VCA, which allows us to pass through whatever shapes are having, happening on our first 3D VCA into the output here. So if I turn the output here down, and then I turn the output here up, you can see that we have, let me adjust my oscilloscope, you can see that we have these mushrooms, uh, which are coming from a pure data patch on my computer. Um, this is then going out through my sound card. I actually have two patches, and each one is hooked up to our 3D VCA. So the southernmost inputs are our mushroom, and then the northernmost inputs is this scene of a uh, butterfly flying over a grid, right? And uh, these are all coming from my sound card, from these pure data patches, which are quite fantastic. They come from uh, oscilloscopemusic.com, which has a bunch of wonderful resources for anyone looking to get into this. I believe these patches were made by Jeremy Beam Fenderson, who's someone who has done a lot to sort of popularize this kind of artwork and uh, who is, uh, if you are interested in this sort of thing, I would definitely suggest checking out both their YouTube channel and uh, oscilloscopemusic.com. Now, I'll have the link to that um, in the description below, 100%. And uh, thank you to the folks at Oscilloscope Music for sharing these patches. It makes it a lot easier to be able to show what we're doing here and what we're doing is the same kind of manipulations we did to our shape before. We're able to change the size, we're able to change the aspect ratio, make it a little smaller. We're able to change the aspect ratio, right? So now it's flattened, 
in one dimension or another, and we're able to also gradually crossfade between the two shapes. And you can see one of the interesting things about this is that we're sort of like transposing one shape onto the other one, right? So because we have these three mushrooms, you can see now that when I'm blending together, we start to get almost like three butterflies. We get a fourth butterfly that's actually happening from this dot on the ground, which creates enough intensity in order for the mushroom to sort of grow out of it, right? And uh, this is a pretty interesting way of working. I actually made these scenes um, at the same frequency, but you're able to get interesting results just like before by messing with the frequency of the two, or we can start to add in our circle again, right? And you can see here, we're sort of transposing the butterfly in a circle. We can change the frequency, get sort of gradually spinning butterfly, or it's sort of some wobbly mushrooms, right? And the relative frequency of the oscillator that we're using, as well as the oscillator creating the mushrooms, determines the way in which the two wobble together. So, as you can see, adding together multiple of these scenes and shapes can uh, make some pretty interesting and abstract results, even if it stops to look like something representational, right? So, if I turn down the oscillator, and we just have the mushrooms, and then we have the mushrooms of the butterfly adding together, it no longer starts to look like either one, it sort of starts to look like something that's a blend of the two, right? And then as I increase the circle, getting this weird sort of spinning almost it's almost looks like a drill it's like moving counterclockwise I can add back in the harmonic oscillator and try to find a frequency where these things all play nicely with each other maybe take out some of the harmonic complexity you can hear even that as the shapes become more in tune the image also starts to look less chaotic, right? If I was to make one of these things like super out of tune with the other things, actually that looks kind of cool, but if I make it super out of tune with the other things, right? We start to get something that looks really noisy, but once we can sort of find a harmonic, and things are just slowly phasing in and out of each other, then our shape starts to simplify quite a bit, right? And so now we have all four of these shapes being added together. I'm gonna go ahead and take an LFO, maybe slow that sucker down. Here I have an LFO coming from the Tides clone that I'm using. And we have it modulating the X of both of our 3D VCAs. So you can see sometimes the shape is flattening in one direction or another. I have it in the uh, multiply mode so that the LFOs are sort of going in and out of sync with each other. I can also take this and modulate the Y parameter. So now we're getting a sort of gradual blend between all four of our different shapes. And you can see sometimes it sort of picks one of them out to be more apparent. I think the easiest to identify is the mushroom, but every once in a while you can see the butterfly or the circle popping in or out. And, uh, you know, we're getting, getting some pretty interesting stuff out of this, you know? And one of, the, one of the most interesting things about oscilloscope music to me is that you can hear everything that's happening on the screen, right? So there's a sort of synesthetic relationship between the audio and the visuals that you're seeing. And even with most oscilloscope music, you're able to take the two outputs from your stereo, um, you know, output from your computer, or from, you know, your record player or whatever, plug it into an oscilloscope and see everything that's going on. So people are able to replicate the imagery 
um, using their own equipment. Okay, that's going to be it for our patch demonstration. Um, I want to thank you for sitting through one of our longer and more mathematical patch demos. Hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, if you're already into oscilloscope music, hopefully this helps to explain some of the uses that 3 VCA can have in your setup. We're going to go ahead and build off of these basic building blocks that we learned in order to have a more complex patch demonstration next week using 3D VCA to rotate a shape. So um, hopefully you tuned in then. Thanks again for watching.